Good day, folks. Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. We have with us Fawad Khan. I came to Canada in 2019, uh, and as soon as he was able to land, uh, he was able to find a job for himself. And he will relate that story how he came about doing that. So, without having me to introduce him any further, we'll get started. So, thank you, Fawad. And uh, can you please get started by telling us a little bit about yourself first? Sure, Saad. Thank you. Thank you for having me, and thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share my journey. it's a journey of privilege and blessing as you mentioned right after i i landed in canada that was back in march 2019 i got my first job with one of the largest ketel cos that is operating in canada in the capacity of a senior financial analyst now uh, a lot of people actually told me to not hunt for a for a senior position because i did not boast a canadian experience to begin with but uh, one of the learnings that i've realized uh, throughout this journey is to apply a personal discount rate to all the suggestions that you get so not everybody has the same perspective it's not he or she might not be coming from the same point of view or he or she might not have the same uh, ambitions that you have so always make sure that you apply your uh, apply your discount rates to the opinions and suggestions that you get so i started uh, applying and uh when i say that i got my job in the first three months uh, let me give you a, a uh, an idea of what it took to get that job uh, or to get that foot in the door so in the first two months i applied to roughly around 500 companies and when i say i applied to 500 co- companies it does not mean that i just sent my cv uh, a generic cv to these positions i actually tailor tailored my cv according to the job description uh wherever possible i i i um, specialized the cover letter to address to the hiring manager so it was a very methodical and a meticulous uh, approach to to appro- to to apply for these vacancies and out of those 500 companies uh i got a response by only five of them so that's a success ratio of 1% and out of those five uh, interviews that i landed with hr only two uh came back with a technical interview uh, to to proceed with and so so as you can as you can guess from the statistics that's a roughly a 0.5% success ratio that i had in the entire journey but that 0.5% is actually 100% for me because at the end of the day i landed in my job so the key uh the key learning that i wanted to share with the audience is to actually keep trying because that basically elevates your chances of success it's not the failure that counts it's just that one time that you get to the right place at the right time with the right people and then you click and then then the magic happens so that's how i i came about working within the first 3 months and, and i can consider myself very privileged in terms of my previous experience i have roughly 6 years of experience within the finance domain um working in the finance reporting side analysis side and lastly i was engaged with uh engaged with musk pakistan as a finance business partner that that was uh, my last job in pakistan in terms of qualification i have a bba uh bba degree in, specialized in finance from iba karachi so that's a bit of a, about of uh, my portfolio right now i'm currently uh thankfully i've been uh, promoted within one and a half year within the company that i'm working with and so i'm currently working as a finance manager i'm hoping to grow and uh, be ambitious as well or as always so that's that's a bit about myself thank you so much uh, uh, for you've kind of covered all the questions that i normally ask in the sequence that uh, i normally do uh, one thing i know um, uh, regarding real estate we were having our conversation I just thought i will get your opinion on what is your take on the current uh, real estate market as it is in the, the gta right now um it's a it's a bit of a difficult question to ask because there's so much of context that that has been incorporated into into getting where we are and right now it's moving towards unaffordability but i i like to try and i like to question myself and i like to look at things differently so how i try to look at this is show sure, there's an un- unaffordability factor here right now that comes at play but it depends on who you ask actually so we generally in our circle you'll see it's a it's a single earner kind of a, fa- a family structure that we that we usually see around ourselves but when you look at 
a Stat Canada report uh, that was published in 2019. If you look at the medium median household income that that was published in 2019, uh, a family uh, with a couple with without kids, kids, they their their median inc- income is somewhere around 105, 105 thousand dollars, and that's after tax. So so if you put that that view in perspective, 50% of your population actually can afford a home four or five times at 105,000 or 135,000 if you look at the gross income. So it's, it, it, does, it does make you realize that it's not as unaffordable as, as people deem it to be. It's just that you are in a situation where you can't afford. Obviously, there's a buyer who's paying the price for that real estate. In your view, it's really appreciated. You know, in your view, it doesn't hold value. But then again, it's a free market. So there's a seller who's willing to sell at that price point, and there's a buyer who's willing to buy it. So at the end of the day, you can keep your narrative that it's unaffordable, but there are transactions happening. And so I think unless you decide to consciously uh, improve your situation in trying to make it affordable for yourself, I don't think I don't think things are going to change. It's only going to get worse from here on out. Anyway, that's an interesting uh, perspective. Uh, thank you for sharing that. I know we've had conversations around that, so I thought I'll get your views on that. Uh, but sure. one last uh, question uh, for you, and that is uh, for those folks who are planning to come to Canada, uh, what is your advice? Uh, how should they position themselves? Uh, yeah, I think I think uh, one of the best advices that I think would be very le- relevant to newcomers is surround yourselves with people who believe in you, who give you uh, a pause, who give you encouragement rather than trying to pull you down. So just talking from my experience, I uh, if I go to an example, uh, before I got this job, I went to uh, an individual, a gentleman who basically ran his own classes and basically wanted to give me a course on how to get into uh, an FA level position by training me on different SAP and different uh, system uh, capac- capabilities. And the moment he saw my resume, he, he, he trashed it. He said, it's not good enough. There's so much that needs to be done on myself in terms of grooming me, in terms of my resume. But on the other hand, there was another friend and uh, at another time who, who said that I was perhaps holding myself back when I introduced myself to him. He said, you have a good resume. Why don't you believe in yourself? And so with the same resume, I got my, uh, myself a, a, a good entry point, a, an entry point that perhaps people would think was a bit ambitious for, 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 for my profile, but I got it. So give yourself a chance, uh, believe in yourself, because if you don't, I don't think anybody else will believe in you. So that's that's the um, that's the advice I, I would give to yeah to believe believe in yourself that's the crux of everything for sure thank you so much uh, for uh, for this uh, very nice session and discussion I'm sure people watching would be able to take away something useful for themselves and be able to apply in their current situation so thank you so much uh, for doing this thank you Saad thank you for the opportunity it was a pleasure.